Why are we so protective of intellectual property to begin with? Ideas are just in our heads. They're not food or shelter or objects or anything that we need to survive. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about roleplay intellectual property, or alternatively titled, Please Steal My Ideas. Why are we talking about something as heavy as intellectual property in roleplay? Well, this is the first of a new kind of video that I'm making that's all about inspiration. All of my videos really are intended as inspiration of one kind or another, but these videos are explicitly meant to inspire you. So I want to be clear. If you see something in my videos that you like for your roleplay, copy it. And I mean that. I want you to copy my roleplay. Now, if you've been in the roleplay community for a while, this probably sounds crazy. So let me break it down for you. Why are we so protective of intellectual property to begin with? Ideas are just in our heads. They're not food or shelter or objects or anything that we need to survive. So why? To understand where this comes from, we have to talk just a little bit about intellectual property laws and capitalism. Capitalism is the economic system that basically the modern world operates in. So according to Wikipedia, capitalism is an economic system based on the private ownership of the means of production and their operation for profit. In practice, what this means is money is in control. The way to gain power in our society is to get more money. Indeed, you even need a certain amount of money to survive. Money is required for food, for transportation, for shelter, and in the US, it's even required for your healthcare. So let's imagine for a moment that you're a writer in the 17th and 18th centuries, sort of in the beginnings of capitalism. You just want to write. However, you must rely largely on yourself to amass enough money to live. So with the help of movable type, invented just a few hundred years before, you decide to write and sell copies of your book. This is working well enough until someone buys a copy of your book, uses their own printing equipment to create additional copies of your book, and then sells it for a cheaper price. Now, because of this, you're selling fewer books, and you can't afford to live. So what's an artist to do? This is where copyright law comes in. When someone creates a work, copyright law is intended to allow them ownership of that work for a certain amount of time so that they can make enough profit to be able to live. When someone creates a work, copyright law is intended to allow them to make a reasonable amount of profit off of that work before the work becomes public domain and then everyone can use it. Before copyright laws became the norm in Western Europe, everything was public domain. If you made something, someone else could copy it. We still do this today even with older works. Think about just about every early Disney movie, especially the princess ones like Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, or Snow White. These movies are a Disney vision of a public domain work. The thing that came in and made copying art a large-scale problem was capitalism. Since under capitalism, each individual is responsible for generating their own wealth, now artists need protection for their works. So they got it. With the Copyright Act of 1790, American authors had the sole right to print, reprint, and publish their work. This lasts for a period of 14 years after publication. They can then renew after that for another 14. So this means at that time, you could make money for your work for 28 years before it became public domain. So if this is the first time you've heard about copyright law, you're probably thinking right now, wait, I know a lot of things way older than 28 years that I'm not allowed to copy. There's no copy of Disney's version of Cinderella, for example, and that's like 70 years old. And this is where we circle back to capitalism, under which, remember our definition, the goal is profit. If we can make a bunch of money in 28 years, think about the amount we could make in more. What about after the author passes away and the company wants to keep making money long after they're gone? So now it's not about making sure artists are fairly compensated. Now it's about making as much profit as humanly possible. Are you starting to see the cracks in the system?
Lucky for all of you, this video is about roleplay, so we're going to leave the copyright law history there. And the takeaway should be the whole process of protecting intellectual property is to make money off of that intellectual property. And that's why it's not the best thing to repost art as opposed to reblogging or retweeting it. You want to allow people to find the original artists so they can hopefully purchase from them. That's also why downloading these videos and re-uploading them elsewhere probably isn't a good idea. Driving people to these videos points to my Patreon, it points to buying my book, and then we also have the YouTube algorithm to contend with on top of that. The algorithm works much like a system of capital, by the way. So while I might really loathe it, I have to play the capitalist game on here at least to some extent. And I also have to play the capitalist game when I support my artist friends on Twitter. Because I have to operate in the system just like everyone else does. So what about roleplay intellectual property? What about our OCs? Our plots? Our roleplay games? Are we making any money off of those? Are we ever going to make any money off of those? No, we're not. So why are we so concerned about other role players stealing our ideas? If an artist who's writing books is worried about losing money, what are we worried about losing? Let's do an example. Say you go find one of my original characters' bios. They're out there, it's not hard to find if you've watched a bunch of my videos, so this should be pretty easy for most of you. So say you do that, and then you and one of your friends decide to roleplay using my original characters. Does this restrict my ability to use my original characters with my friends any longer? N no, it doesn't, obviously. I can still roleplay my OCs with no ill effects. I can't roleplay with every role player in existence, nor do I want to. So you taking my characters and roleplaying them with your friends affects me not at all. Okay, so that's characters. But what about roleplay groups? The roleplay I'm running right now, Magic Reborn, that lives and breathes based off of the people that are in that roleplay. You could literally take the entire lore book, the rules, everything about it, copy it directly, open your own, start to run it, and it would be nothing like my Magic Reborn. Because you're not me, and you don't have my players. Okay, so you might be asking now then, Karen, aren't you worried that your players will leave for the copy? No, absolutely not. And if you are, I would recommend looking at your moderation skills and tactics. No one is going to leave for a copy of the roleplay unless they have some kind of beef with the original or they had no intention of joining the original in the first place. So if you're thinking of your member count as some form of social capital within the roleplay space, take a step back. Your members are people, not money. They aren't a number for you to grow and boast about to accumulate power. Instead of focusing on having the biggest roleplay group, focus on having a quality roleplay group. If you're focused on quality, your numbers will naturally go where they should for the type of roleplay that you have designed. So, in conclusion, protecting intellectual property only matters when you're trying to protect some kind of capital that you're gaining. And in roleplay, there is no capital. As players in a collaborative hobby, we should be sharing our ideas. Because if people didn't share their ideas, we wouldn't have the advances in technology that we have today. We also wouldn't have improvements in quality of life or the caliber of art that we have today. And roleplay is no different than the things I just listed. Our hobby is contingent on other people participating for it to happen. So you have to, to some extent, do as the Romans do. And that means a little bit of copying is beneficial. So anytime you see a video with one of the orange thumbnails like this one, it's an inspiration video. And I want you to steal my ideas. Honestly, I want you to steal all of my ideas and use them for your roleplay. That's the whole point of this channel. Wow, okay. <laughs> that was a doozy. Um, no one can ever say I am not about collaboration, not competition anymore, right? So let me know in the comments down below if I'm cancelled now or if I've ascended to sainthood or whatever. Remember, competition via capitalism destroys everything it touches. So let's not let a collaborative hobby like roleplay be like that. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, whatever engagement features YouTube adds in the future, do it all. And an extra special thank you to my patrons, which you're seeing on the screen right now. If you would like to be included or get other fun perks, link to my Patreon in the description down below. 
And as always, don't forget to make it a great day. And happy holidays.